Thank you, Stu. In 2004, Blockbuster Entertainment had a thriving business. In fact, how many here in your life have ever rented a movie from Blockbuster? Everybody in the room. How many were repeat customers? In other words, you rented the movie from them more than once, right? How many have rented a movie from Blockbuster in the last three months? <laughs> Nobody, right? Nobody. So despite the fact that in 2004 they were doing 5.9 billion in sales, generating 120 million in net income, 9,000 stores, 60,000 employees, Blockbuster is gone. See, Blockbuster had repeat customers, as we talked about, but did they have loyal customers? Those customers who were willing to stick with them through thick and thin. Now let's compare and contrast that with Apple. In 1997, Apple Computer was on the brink of bankruptcy. See, their founder, Steve Jobs, had been gone for 12 years, and the new leadership team had veered off course from the strategy and the purpose that Steve had set. But despite all those many mistakes, Apple still had diehard fans. Those clients, those customers who were so loyal that they were willing to stick with Apple through thick and thin. And look what happened when Steve came back in 97, righted the ship, got the organization back on track with their mission and purpose. Not only did they create thrones of diehard fan, die fan customers, but they went on to be the most valuable company in the world. So what's the difference between these two organizations? Is it that one had just superiorly better products? I think that's debatable. At the time, Apple owned just a sliver of market share. Could it be that they didn't have any competition? Apple didn't have any competition. I think most would agree that Microsoft is pretty formidable. Could it be that they were just lucky, that that loyalty was luck? I'm here to tell you that companies that create loyal customers, that have diehard fan clients, don't rely on luck. Rather, they have intentional plans. It's their intentional plans that create diehard fans. Just a couple days, I was talking to, talking to a friend of mine. He had his nephew who came in town for spring break. His nephew is from New York. He's making his way through the airport and his iPad falls out of his backpack, hits the ground, and cracks. They go to the South Lake Apple store, they show it, the associate comes out, he takes a look at it, he looks at the iPad, he looks at my friend Steve, looks at the nephew, looks at the iPad, looks at my friend Steve, looks at the nephew, looks at the iPad. He says, you know what? This could have happened to me. I'll tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna give you a new iPad. Complimentary. Who is that Apple associate in love with? See, Apple associates love their customers because Apple loves their associates. I was in that same store over the holidays, hustle bustle of the holidays, million things going on, and huge weight in there. And all of a sudden, the general manager comes out and he says, Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to ask everybody to pause for a minute. We want to honor one of our associates who's leaving us to go pursue the next step in their career. And about the time they did that, all the associates in the store started clapping, doing what I later learned is called the Apple Clap Off. And this associate walked through the store, I kid you not, tears running down his face. He gives hugs to every one of his associates. And I'm just sitting there in awe. And as he hugged the last associate and started to make his way to the door, I just thought to myself, I thought, man, if this is how Apple treats those who are leaving, I wonder how they treat those that are staying. Compare and contrast that with Blockbuster. Could you imagine back in the day going to Blockbuster saying, hey, I left this thing sitting on my kitchen table for two weeks in a row. I'm sorry, here's my video. What would, the, what would the Blockbuster associate say? You owe us $100. Here's our, here's our business model at work right here. Well, sorry, sir, that'll be 
$40 in late fees. But hey, this Friday, we've got some new releases coming out. We hope we'll see you back. <laughs> right? uh, so who was Blockbuster in love with? Themselves. Right? Were they, yeah, were they in love with their customers or were they in love with themselves, their business model? Their business model. You know, the company that's been giving credit with taking Blockbuster out is a company called Netflix. Mm -hmm. Their founder, Reed Hastings, went through a similar experience just like that. It frustrated him so much that he had to pay a $40 late fee that for the next two weeks, he racked his brain day and night trying to figure out how to develop a, bit, a better model. Mm -hmm. And he did. And if, if Blockbuster's original mistakes weren't big enough, in 2002, Blockbuster had a chance to buy Netflix. Now at the time, Blockbuster was doing about four billion in sales. Reed wanted $50 million for Netflix. If that 50, be, 50 million would be a lot to you and I, but to Blockbuster, it was a rounding error. But Blockbuster passed. Because who were they in love with? They loved that business model, brick and mortar, late, how do we do that? Where's all our late fees gonna go? So who was Blockbuster in love with? Their business model. So I wanna share one more story about Apple that I hope will, will make this point for you. In 1997, when, when Steve Jobs came back to, to Apple, his top priority was to demonstrate that Apple, again, was committed to being special. That Apple was committed to living the purpose that Steve had put in place. And one of the early speeches that he gave, he said this. He said, Apple is not about what computers can do. Apple's about what creative people can do with computers. Mm. Powerful, mm. powerful. He went on to say, Apple's about people who think outside the box. Apple is about people that wanna use computers to change the world. Mm. Powerful, powerful message. Where's his focus? Is it internal? Is he looking at the past? Is he thinking, looking at this great computer, CPU speeds, all this whiz bang stuff we have? No, he was looking forward to his customers. Steve Jobs, from the beginning, was always in love with his customers, not his products, not his services, not his business model, not what they had done in the past. So I ask you, who are you in love with? Are you in love with your customers? Or are you in love with your products, your services, your business model? So let me leave you with the final question. What would it mean to you to be able to consistently generate even more diehard fan clients? Don't you deserve it? Don't your employees deserve it? And most importantly, don't your customers deserve it? Thank you. Yeah.